the end of the war by this point is by, with Lincoln's election, et cetera, is, whoops, in sight. Um, and, uh, you know, after Sherman has gone to Savannah, he starts marching up through South Carolina. Just when Congress is debating, uh, the House is debating the 13th Amendment and passing it, Sherman's army is entering South Carolina. If slavery is dying on the ground, not in the House of Representatives. Slaves, this is the closest thing to an outright slave revolution happens in South Carolina. Slaves rise up, they seize plantations, they burn plantation houses, they seize Manigault's great plantation on the uh, Savannah River, they take the portraits of the family out of the house and leave them out in the rain to be destroyed. In other words, all the grievances of slavery kind of splash over into this, uh, this insurrection inspired by Sherman's army marching into South Carolina. And um, eventually, he gets to Columbia, which is burned, the capital of South Carolina. Eventually, he will come all the way up to Virginia and close the trap on Lee's army, which is still besieged by Grant at Petersburg. But before that can happen, Grant finally, in April 18. Uh, 65 breaks through the, the, the lines of, of Lee. Lee has to abandon Petersburg, whereupon Richmond is open to the Union Army, which seizes Richmond in April 1863. As you all know, Lee's army, Lee tries to flee westward, maybe to reunite with the only other real Confederate army around now, Johnston in North Carolina, but Grant heads him off, and at Appomattox Courthouse, April 9, 1865, Lee surrenders, and that is usually marked as the end of the Civil War, even though there are still are some Confederate forces in the field. As McCurry tells us, and I don't want to just repeat what she said, in the very, very dying days of the Confederacy, they debate arming slaves, and they finally pass a law in authorizing the enlistment of slaves in the um, Confederate armies. Um, but even there, they're not, they cannot get themselves to declare emancipation in general or even officially promise freedom to those slaves who are going to serve, although it's generally understood that slaves who, un, who serve in the Confederate army will gain their freedom. But it's very important to remember that is not emancipation. Arming slaves is not equivalent to emancipation. This has nothing to do with all those other slaves if the Confederate, Confederacy somehow managed to win the war at this point. And a handful of black people are sent from Richmond to the front lines at Petersburg to try to defend Petersburg. And uh, McCurry tells the story of the last days of the Confederacy. Um, here is... Uh, you know, here's, let's see if we can find, uh, oh, here we go. Here's the evacuation, a great lithograph of the evacuation of Richmond. Um, the city is burning, warehouses full of supplies are burning, thanks to the bombardment of the Union Army on the bridge, hundreds of thousands of people are fleeing. Uh, the day after the Union Army takes Richmond, Lincoln comes to Richmond and, um, you know, walks the streets of Richmond, surrounded, is, is hailed by a, a savior, as a savior, by uh, the black people there. He, they bow in front of him. He insists they have to, you know, get up. He says, never bow to any man. And, uh, but, you know, the, the, this tremendously chaotic and inspiring moment takes place in Richmond as all the blacks throng the streets to welcome Lincoln and um, the, the whites basically stay indoors and, you know, to, to stay away. And as I've said, recently a statue of Lincoln was erected in Richmond just in the last couple of years to mark his visit to Richmond in 1865.